Baker knew their personal tastes through his job as secretary to the Democratic Party in the Senate. Most politicians are unusually horny. That's all they talked about was who could do what. Alan Rometch entertained the clientele, according to Baker. Soon, Rometch was catching the eye of someone quite significant. President Kennedy's best friend and his wingman, Bill Thompson, was there, and he came over to me and he said, where in the hell did you get this beautiful girl? And Bill Thompson asked me if she could go have dinner with the president. So I arranged for Ellen Romich to go to Bill Thompson's apartment, and he took her to the White House on many occasions. He uh, called me after his first meeting with, with Ellen and said that that was the best oral sex he'd ever had. Fresh and Lean has a question for you. What if you could taste a bit of that success you're working so hard for right now? What if you had your own personal farmer, a personal chef? Oh, careful there, buddy. Personal delivery driver. Hey, Andy. The meals you want each week, guaranteed. Like, literally, all of these. Mmm, that is some tasty success right there. Order organic farm-to-table chef-cooked meals. Delivered to your door, ready to eat. Fresh and lean. Feed your potential. With FanDuel Fantasy, you can make your dream team a reality again and again. Make your pulse go up and down and up again. Make your team rises in the ranks with every play all day long. And if you get your lineup just right, you can make big season-long wins without the season-long waits. Make every small moment add up to one big moment with FanDuel Fantasy. New customers play free for $1 million. FanDuel, make every moment more. Heart attacks can happen at any time. My name is Dr. Crandall, and as a cardiologist, I tell my patients they need to be aware of the hidden symptoms of a heart attack. That's why I created this simple heart test. This free online survey makes it easy for you to check your own risk of heart disease. Newsmax says the simple heart test could save your life. Here's the truth. If you suffer cardiac arrest, outside of a hospital, you have just a 7% chance of surviving. With the proper knowledge, heart attacks can be prevented. Over 2 million Americans have already taken this important step. Go to simpleheartest911.com today to take the test and find out how you can also receive Dr. Crandall's best-selling book, The Simple Heart Cure. The president's intimacy with a woman with apparent communist connections was potentially a major security threat. It was widely believed that she was a spy. And it was the belief that she was that was enough to create the scandal. Now, all it needed was for this private scandal to become public. When it came to the attention of Robert Kennedy, he literally deported her to get her out of the country. On August the 21st, 1963, Ellen Rometsch had her visa revoked and was flown back to Germany on Bobby Kennedy's orders. Kennedy had avoided the crisis. But that month, he endured a personal tragedy when Jackie gave birth to a son, Patrick. The baby was gravely ill. When Kennedy went to see his stricken infant, Secret Serviceman Larry Newman was at his side. Children's ward was dark, and at the end of the hall was his son, who was in intensive and critical care. And on the way down the hall, we passed a, uh, a room with um, uh, two little girls in it. And uh, he asked what was wrong with the girls, and the doctor told him they had severe burns all over their body. and. Uh, and uh, one of them might lose the use of her hands, and the other, her bib had caught fire, and they looked like to be three or four years old. Very delightful, pretty little girls. Kennedy hesitated for a minute, asked for a pen, and wrote to each of them a note. There was no photo op. There was nothing like you see today. Nobody said anything about it. 
And then he walked down to the end of the hall to see his son. And it was the most humbling thing I'd ever seen with any person I'd ever protected. It was just simply the act of a prince. Baby Patrick died soon after. The family tragedy touched the American public. With his popularity high, Kennedy was now planning to run for a second term in office. Within three months, he would go to Dallas to boost his ratings. But in September 1963, a political scandal exploded. It involved Bobby Baker, senior political secretary in the Senate. It also threatened to expose JFK's affair with Ellen Romedge, the woman suspected of being a communist spy. A Senate inquiry was beginning to reveal Baker's role in providing escorts for top politicians. The Bobby Baker investigation fueled American press interest in the Romedge story. One paper now published a coded reference to her sexual relationships. The Des Moines Register ran a story saying that Ellen Rometsch um, had been deported, but said that she'd been sexually involved with prominent New Frontiersmen. Now, the New Frontier um, was what Kennedy had said his presidency would aim for. It was completely clear in people's minds that the reference was to the White House. Bobby Kennedy went into action yet again. He telephoned Clark Molinoff, the journalist who had written the story. When pressed to reveal who he was referring to within the White House, Molinoff refused. One can assume that there were threats similar to the threats that had happened earlier in the summer, and certainly there were no more stories. Bobby Kennedy had gagged the press once again. He knew that if Ellen Romich was given immunity and testified truthfully that his brother would either be impeached or would be forced to resign. The Kennedys were cornered, and Bobby Kennedy knew it. He had to take desperate measures. He asked Hoover to stop the Senate inquiry. He said this would be greatly harmful to the presidency, and I would appreciate it if you would go up personally and see, see these senators and ask him not to hold hearings on the matter. Director Hoover at first refused to do it. A humiliated Bobby Kennedy had to literally beg him to go and do it. And, and Hoover did go and met secretly at home, uh, with, with this we know from the documents, with the two senior senators. Hoover told the senators that his files showed highly embarrassing links between many Washington politicians and Bobby Baker's party girls. A full-scale investigation could bring down the walls on everyone. My name is Sean Hayes. I'm from Yorkville, Illinois. When you've lost everything when it comes to health, and you have no energy. Having good health is everything. After about two weeks of taking the balance of nature, my son made a comment that somebody could do a kickflip on a video. I'm like, I can do a kickflip. And he's like, no, you can't, because he has never seen me be that kind of active guy. So here I am after a long work week, after doing all kinds of weekend warrior projects, I go out there, I pick up the skateboard, and I nail a kickflip for him. And even afterwards, the next couple of days, I realize I'm still not sore. I'm recovered already. So having good health, good nutrition, being able to spend quality time with your friends and your family and do all the extras that you only dreamed that you would ever be able to do again, yeah, it means everything. And Balance of Nature does that. Start now by going to balanceofnature.com and don't forget to use discount code NEWSMAX. When it comes to real estate agents, experience matters. The best agents know how to market your home for top dollar and navigate through a complex transaction. At Ideal Agent, we created our smart seller system with top rated local agents to sell your home for as low as a 2% commission. I was amazed in the fact that my house sold in one day. Ideal Agent saved me in the neighborhood of twenty dollars to $25,000 in commissions. The process was as easy as it gets. It was turnkey. I'm a very busy guy and they just took care of everything. They are the number one 
way to sell your house. I've used Ideal Agent two times. Ideal Agent guided me through the entire process, every step. You want to have the best agents, but you want to get the best deal. Using Ideal Agent with both properties, I've saved over $30,000. Our service is free, available nationwide, and there's zero obligation. Call us today or visit IdealAgent.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, inventor of MyPillow. Thanks to your support, you've helped make MyPillow become one of the fastest growing companies in America. Over the last 12 years, you've helped MyPillow create thousands of jobs right here in the USA. When I got MyPillow, I'm asleep almost immediately. I stay asleep at night and I wake up more well rested in the morning. That's why I invented MyPillow. My patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs and helps keep your neck supported and aligned. I'm interrupting this commercial right now. Retailers have canceled my pillow. And to thank you for your support, I'm going to pass the savings directly on to you. Go to mypillow.com right now to get deep discounts on all my pillow products. For example, you can get my premium my pillows regularly $69.98, now just $29.98, the lowest price ever. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. This country was made by tax rebels, freedom fighters, gold seekers, believers, lovers, and true patriots. We're Newsmax, and we're their heirs, and so are you. Newsmax TV, real news for real people. Hoover later was able to call the White House, playing his power card again, and say, and I quote from the document, everything is well in hand. The senators assured me they will say nothing. They won't talk or say anything. Um, it could not be more obvious that this was a real cover-up and that the Kennedys were now not only compromised by the sexual affair, but beholden to J. Edgar Hoover. But the danger had not yet passed. The world's press were offering a fortune to hear Ellen Rometch's story. It seemed that John Kennedy's reputation depended on the silence of one woman. People were making major offers of money to her to tell her story on, on television or in the, in the newspapers. As it turns out, she turned those offers down, apparently because the Kennedys had paid her off, given her enough to shut her mouth. But they couldn't be sure of that. The FBI was still investigating. It was rumbling away. With the scandal still threatening to explode, JFK headed for Texas as part of his re-election campaign. The very next day, the president paraded through the streets of Dallas. He went to Dallas because his popularity was slipping below 60%. Our president now does pretty good at 40. I was on Simmons Freeway earlier, and even the freeway was jam-packed with spectators waiting their chance to see the president as he made his way towards the trade mart. It, it, it appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. Several police officers are rushing up the hill at this time. Stand by just a moment, please. Something has happened in the motorcade route. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. The president is dead. Women here. In the wake of the tragedy, the myth of Camelot took hold. The 1,000-day reign of a modern King Arthur. The idealized President Kennedy, cut down as he offered to guide America into a golden age, would become untouchable. He's remembered for his youth, his vitality, his aspirations for doing the right thing, for a government that could, that could be affirmative and, and not negative, that could make a difference in people's lives. Publicly, Jack Kennedy had been an heroic and moral figure. Privately, he broke all the rules, and when he died, he was on the brink of being exposed. So what would have happened had he lived? If in the second term, the American people had seen there was a bad Jack, could the good Jack have survived? Personally, I don't think so.
roiling Asian summer of 1950 had to be some sort of nightmare. Barely five years after they had won brilliant victories over huge, well-armed enemies across two oceans, Western armies, possessors of the atom bomb, were being humiliated, slaughtered, and thrown backward. Their rampaging enemy was not some formidable world power. The humbling defeats were being inflicted by a peasant army, representing less than half of an almost unknown nation. Indeed, most people had to go to a remote corner of the world map to locate the new battleground. The communist North Korean assault that rolled across the border of South Korea on June 25, 1950, was an ambush that astounded not only the invaded state, but a Western world that had only begun to see its crucial interests in the far reaches of Asia. The Russian bear and the Chinese behemoth suddenly seemed deeply implicated in new and naked military aggression. The swaggering West had assumed that its military might, advancing under a pure United Nations flag, would cross into Korea and quickly snuff out the upstart attack. But in a few short weeks, the humbled UN forces found themselves about to be hurled off the bloody Korean peninsula and into the sea. Over a half million UN soldiers and a million and a half Korean and Chinese were about to become casualties in the following three bloody years of what was to be called the Forgotten War. But it has not been forgotten by anybody who fought there. Some Korean War veterans believe that we lost the war, some believe that we won the war, and some believe that our men died for a tie. In truth, we did all three. The Korean tragedy had origins in both mistakes and inevitabilities. explosion would thrust an unknown nation into the white-hot center of world affairs for three terrible years. The peninsula nation, thrusting south between the Yellow Sea and the Sea of Japan, is a land the size of Utah. It stretches some 635 miles at its longest stretch and is 150 miles across at its widest. The main islands of Japan lie just 120 miles away. Its mountainous backbone, the Taibak Mountains, has peaks above 8,000 feet. But Korea's location gives its stature far beyond its modest borders. Korea reclaimed its liberty in 1945 after many harsh years of Japanese rule with the defeat of Japan in World War II. The Soviet Union, a last-minute entrant,